All right, guys, today's a really exciting day for me because we're here to do a PC retro gaming tour. As you guys can see, my setup of what I used to have before in the corner of that room has now grown into a full-size collection of PC. I have a dedicated Windows XP machine now from the PC I always wanted in my childhood. I have a Windows 98 and MS-DOS machine that's dedicated with all of these games and all of these accessories and stuff that went through my childhood uh, that you can see all over me that we're going to go through. And I'm really excited to how this has now turned out. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech. Going for a brekkie is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is all right, guys, so we're back here to do another tour of my PC retro gaming area. So if for all you guys who have been watching, you guys know that on my previous one that I did uh, over a year ago at this point, I didn't have this set up at all because this is where my old computer, uh, sorry, my new gen computer used to be, which is now on the other side over there because everything got switched around in this room, as you guys saw, if you guys watched my game room tour, a lot of things switched around in here. And then I created this entire new space for my retro PC area because before it was a small desk. I had hardly any room to play. It was, it was really uh, not a lot of room and I definitely didn't have enough room as I do now to do everything I'm doing now. So I changed it. It's in a completely new area of the room. I got a, a, a big desk for it. A lot of new things going on over here that I wanted to walk you guys through. Uh, I, I actually don't even have one PC anymore. I have two PCs now. So we'll talk about that because all of that has changed. So let's go ahead and just give an overview of everything first. So as you guys can see here in the corner, uh, this is reminiscent of what I tried to create in this area is when I sit in here, I wanted it to remind me of either my Windows 98 days or my Windows XP days, uh, depending on which machine and what I'm using. So, for example, here on the right hand side, we start off when we start looking at the Virtual Boy here. And these are all my CDs that I have. Some of these uh, games only came in CDs and not boxes or some of them I just found in CDs. So you can see my collection there of games on CDs that I have there. Things like the Disney Animated Storybooks, uh, the original Unreal Tournament, uh, Backyard Soccer, you know, a lot of different games that showed up on there on the CDs. Um, and these are just some of the new games that I got that I haven't actually installed yet, which is why they're just kind of sitting here right now uh, for the time being. Um, and then we have the Commodore 64 Mini that came out, or the full length, actually. I don't know if they actually called it Mini, but the C64, which kind of, uh, you know, goes with the theme of the retro PC area. So I put this over here, and then we got the Virtual Boy sitting right there. And keeping on with the retro theme on the desk here, you can see right here is just a lot of different things from the 90s that I used to keep on my desk back in the day, which is why they're all here. And it kind of adds some decoration element to it when this PC is not being used, when people come over and they look at everything. And it also just reminds me of everything that I had on in the 90s and the early 2000s on my desk. So you can see things like, you know, the Sabicos from back in the day, who remembers those? You have the old version and the new version. You have the AOL 90 CD. Uh, you have Where in the World is Carmen San Diego that we all used to play when we were in school. Um, you know, we have our uh, Vetrex sitting back there that you can play. Uh, we have an old, the, the exact model of my first CD player that I've ever had as a kid. We have the SpongeBob cassette player. We have this telephone here, which does work, which has the sound from the original Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Which is awesome. Uh, we have a cassette from the Nicktoons sitting right there that you can put in the cassette player and listen to all the theme songs from those different shows, which is awesome. Over here on this side, we just have some more games that you guys can see there in the back. So you can see I have uh, Command & Conquer, Yuri's Revenge, uh, the expansion. We have Where in the USA is Carmen Sandiego. We have Doom, uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Aliens, the Gold Edition, Alone in the Dark sitting back there, the Jack series, the Rainbow Six series, Beavis and Butthead. Um... You know, a lot of a lot of good games sitting in that corner here. Um, Nickelodeon basketball sitting up there. So a lot of a lot of good games sitting over there. And then of course we have the flight stick that everyone used to use. Uh, you know, back in Windows 98 and Windows XP, still known as one of the best flight sticks that you can use. So I have that there to play all my flight stick games on the PC. Um, and then here on the top we have the Disney NetPal. Uh, that's what that netbook is there. A uh, really cool part of history on how Disney changed that netbook and kind of added its own spin and its own theme, which is really cool. If you guys want to see a full video on that, I can make one if you guys want for sure. Um, so, and there's actually another one right next to it 
that is the Dell Nickelodeon one. Not as cool as the Disney one. The Disney one had more customization that they did, but cool that this has the Nickelodeon like spy on there and stuff. So if you guys want to see a video on both of these separately, you can let me know in the comments down below. Um, and then of course we end off with the uh, video now player. We have some uh, pogs sitting right there. Um, we have an old NVIDIA graphics card down there. That's a 270 NVIDIA graphics card that I don't have in my machine anymore because I upgrade it, which we'll get into later. But I have the graphics card sitting there, the two, the NVIDIA uh, 260. Uh, I think I said 270. It's a 260 sitting there. Um, so that's really cool. And then going across here, across the middle, we have the Nickelodeon uh, chair here. The orange theme goes perfectly with the 90s vibe I was looking for. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find any Nickelodeon chairs from anything back in the day. I still haven't found any. So I just ended up putting a sticker on the back of the chair uh, to have the Nickelodeon because I couldn't find any Nickelodeon chairs or anything to really match this area. So I just got an orange chair and put a sticker on it. And it didn't turn out too bad. Uh, I like the way that that looks on there. And it's a great office chair that works well there. And then as you can see right in front, we have the two retro speakers sitting in the corner. And right on there, we have a monitor. This is an awesome, awesome OptiQuest monitor. For the, I forget the exact model, but it's really good. It goes all the way up to 1600 resolution. So 1600 by uh, 1024, I think is what the resolution is. Uh, so it has a lot of different options that I can play some games on the highest res and some not, depending on what I'm doing. Um, you know, everything in between. So the monitor is fantastic. Has high refresh rate as well. So I really, really love that monitor. And then, of course, we have the keyboard here. You guys may recognize this keyboard. This is a Logitech G19, one of my favorite keyboards from back in the Windows XP days. Sometimes when I'm not playing this machine, if I'm playing Windows XP, you'll see I have the famous G19 keyboard from Logitech and the famous Logitech mouse that everyone talks about. I believe it's the MX, uh, M518, if I remember correctly. This was brand new in the box that I got, uh, and it's fantastic. Same with the Logitech G19. Fantastic mouse, fantastic keyboard. And this is the setup that it looks like when I'm playing, you know, Windows XP games. But sometimes I hide this mouse and bring this mouse down. This mouse is the one that's connected to my Windows 98 machine that's sitting on the screen right now. And I kind of just bring this out, put this, bring this out over here, put this away, uh, take this keyboard, kind of hide it on the corner there. And you can see right underneath there is my retro uh, keyboard. And I kind of plug that into the USB ports right in the front when I want to play Windows 98. And I'm ready to go. I take this keyboard out of the way, kind of hide it in the corner, and then the setup looks like it's the Windows XP, or sorry, the Windows 98 setup. So I fluctuate the keyboard and mouses for both, depending on which system I'm actually using uh, and which look I want to go for uh, when this is set up. So I had kind of the best of both worlds going on, uh, depending on what I'm doing. And we'll get into this keyboard a little bit more when I show you some gameplay. Uh, and, and speaking of that, uh, of rotating uh, machines and stuff, as you can see here, this is the machine that I had last year. This is an awesome machine. Uh, it has a ATI X800 Pro inside for the graphics card, and it has a Turbo Boot. It has MS-DOS, it has Windows 98, and XP. You can play games for XP really well up to about like 2003, 2004, uh, and, and, and it can still play games up to like 2006, but just not at the highest settings. 2004 is when this graphics card came out, so you can pretty much handle everything at high settings up to there for the most part. Maybe not at the highest resolution sometimes, but for the most part, handles things really well. And I've had a great time with this machine, Triple Boot. Everything that I've thrown at Windows 98 and stuff, it works. Uh, and most of the things work in DOS, and if they don't work in DOS, and I can usually run those games in 98, so either way, it's it, it's fine. And, um, you know, XP runs really well, so I have an option of Triple Boot. But then I started to get into more of my childhood of XP and stuff. And something that I always wanted when I was a kid is an Alienware machine, specifically this Area 51 machine. And it's something that I always wanted and never actually had. Uh, you know, I had a great machine back in the uh, back in the day. I'm not complaining at all. I was really lucky uh, with my with my mom and stuff that was able to get me some of these things. And my, you know, my family, like my grandfather and stuff that got me systems and stuff when I was a kid for Christmas and stuff. But this machine was just uh, a little too expensive back in the day and out of, out of the price range. Uh, so I was able to scour and get one of these that is in really good condition off of ebay as you guys can see here and this machine is a beast it originally came with that 260 graphics card that you guys can see back then which is already a beast but since i had a spare i put into this machine a newer graphics card that i'll show you when i actually look at the machine and stuff but um yeah i have a, a, an even better graphics card and it's actually overkill for the cpu like the cpu is now a bottleneck in there when the graphics card is sometimes used but it makes me play all the games that you can think of at full resolution at max settings uh and it's fantastic because i can play all these windows xp machines you know with no issues at all um 
now every single Windows XP game that came out all the way up to like 2013 now uh, plays at full settings at full resolution. So it's fantastic to have this machine, not only because of the power that it has now, but also because now, um, you know, I have a great looking machine that I've always wanted as a kid. So it's kind of fitting both purposes, uh, the PC that I always wanted and great specs. And then I also added the uh, upgraded the sound card in here. So I added the X5 sound card, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, right there in the front and it gives me really really good sound on some of these 3d fx games uh that came out in the windows xp area it's it's awesome and i even have these creative uh, fatality uh headphones here uh that came out back in the day there uh that are also really cool to use so i can plug in those headphones when i want to use headphones but what i usually do when i'm playing windows xp games is i have the famous logitech 5500 series speaker you can see the sub is sitting right there in the corner and i can see you can see i have one speaker there one speaker that one needs to be replaced which i'm getting replaced soon because i'm missing the center one which i luckily got a center one coming from ebay to match uh because these are actually a different model logitech so i finally got a middle one scoured uh so i have that taken care of but these are the right ones here you got the left and right channel and then i got the bottom the back left and the bottom right right there kind of hidden away and basically what I do when I'm playing is I kind of sit in this chair. I put this little thing right behind me right here. And then I put those speakers right behind me and they kind of just point behind me. And then I blast the sound and do this sound system is so, so cool. I remember when I had this sound system when I was a kid because I did. And the sound system is amazing. And it still is to this day on how crazy this sound system bumps PCs. That's why the thing is so expensive even nowadays for that Logitech 5500 because it's still a great PC sound system. And with this sound card that I have, which is one of the, I think the best sound card back in the day, usually uh, people say for Windows XP days, it's fantastic with this setup that I have now. So I got that all covered there. Coming across back over here, you all, I also got these controllers here. So this is a game port controller that I have hooked up on Windows 98. And this is the one that I usually use on Windows XP when I don't want to use a keyboard. Uh, and then right here, we got some more games hiding in the back. There we got King's Quest, uh, Police Quest, Combat Flight, uh, Flight Simulator, Titanic, uh, No One Lives Forever, a bunch of, bunch of cool games there. And then, of course, this little setup right here with these Sims posters sitting there on the corner. And then, of course, one of my two favorite games from my childhood, Unreal Tournament. Love that game. And Command & Conquer Red Alert 2 sitting up top of there because those are two of my favorite games that I've always played as a child and, and kind of what got me into PC gaming when it all first started. Looking here at the top, this is kind of like my Windows XP collection. Most of these down here were obviously Windows 98 and DOS. So Windows XP, for the most part, lives up here in the top section here. So you can see a lot of great games that I have over here. We got World of Warcraft kind of hiding up there. Uh, the third one, we got Diner Dash, Battlefield 2, the original Sims, Oblivion, uh, Lynx, Halo, SimCity 4, Call of Duty 2, Tron, Unreal Tournament 3. All these great PC games that you guys are looking at here. Some of the highlights up there, Crisis, Far Cry, Fear, and Doom, some of my favorite games from back then. Uh, you got the whole entire Quake series, you got Doom, you got Half-Life 2, uh, and then of course a Doom poster there, so all fantastic. And then spinning back over here, you got uh, Leisure Suit Larry, one of my favorite series. You got this uh, Lucas uh, Archives Volume 1, and I do have Volume 2 sitting over there in the corner uh, back there. Uh, we got the Half-Life Original Adrenaline Pack. We got Diablo 1 and 2 sitting over there. And then, of course, we got all the computers, a little poster that I found there with all the computers from back in the retro days. And then what I used to do in the 90s and 2000s, like a lot of us did, is put posters up of our favorite women from, like, the 90s and stuff. I used to do that in my bedroom all the time, so I figured I'd add a little bit of that nostalgic feeling back here with some of my favorite, you know, actresses and stuff from the 90s and 2000s that I remember. So, of course, Topanga sitting up there, um... You know, from Boy Meets World that I used to love, Mandy Moore sitting up there, Mariah Carey, uh, you know, um, Britney Spears, you know, all that kind of stuff sitting in the corner there. Um, and I uh, also forgot to mention that I have the yo-yo uh, sitting up there. We got the hit clips. We got tech, the tech deck sitting there. We got a Tamagotchi sitting up there. So a lot of cool stuff to kind of reminisce around this PC area. When I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm kind of full of nostalgia. You know, you got this uh, iPad over here, the iPod Classic that's sitting right there. You got this classic floppy disk that are sitting right there ready to go whenever I need to use a floppy disk. You got this HP uh, Palm Pilot who remembers the Palm Pilot from back in the days. All this stuff works and is perfect and uh, just brings back that nostalgic feeling when I'm sitting at this desk playing 98 or playing Windows XP games and hey, I'm playing in an area surrounded by everything that I used to have as a kid and play as a kid. So uh, I love the way that this setup looked. I love the way that it came out so much better than the old setup that I had. 
uh, for sure. N no contest there at all. One of the other things that's really cool is that obviously this machine is on right now and it's Windows 98. That's what you can see here on my background. Um, but I have the Windows XP set up right here as well with the mouse and keyboard right now. All I have to do to switch back and forth, I don't have to like tangle with any wires or anything. I just have a VGA switch and I kind of just hit that there. You can see that the screen then flips over and then you can see it easily as that I'm able to get into my Windows XP machine, the alien where that's sitting here down at the bottom. So I kind of switch between both machines just using that AB thing, which is really cool. You can see I have even AIM that actually does work if you guys want to know how AIM is currently working. Um, there is something called Aim Phoenix out there that a third party developer is working on, which is really awesome. That actually does work. And I'm actually signed in and could talk to someone else if anybody was actually using this currently, but it is really cool to get that nostalgic feeling, uh, to be able to bring that up and use same thing with, um, you know, Winamp that I have on here with the classic Alienware theme here that will pop up here in a second. And you can see here is the Alienware. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys remember. I have a lot of different themes installed for Winamp, but this is the Alienware one that some of us remember. Uh, this one is awesome and I can play a bunch of different songs on here. Um, you know, that's really, really cool to be able to play it that way. Um, and kind of reminisce from back in the day on Winamp. Again, Windows XP here, I have it connected with my Logitech one. So I could just hit the on button over there and, and kind of just hit the play button there and kind of play games that way. I could use my headphones if I could use my headphones if I want to as well, which is really nice. So yeah, Windows XP here, as I told you before, has a new graphics card in here. So if we take a look at the properties of the PC here, you can see the specs of the PC is the Q6600 at 2.4 gigahertz. It's got, um, it's showing only 2.7 gigabytes of RAM, but it does have four gigs in there. Uh, but uh, that's the way it shows on Windows XP because your GPU also takes part of that RAM as well. Um, and then we also, for the graphics card, had the GTX 670, as you guys are seeing there. So GTX 670 is what I'm currently using in here. It did have a 270 in there, as I talked about before. Uh, the 270, or sorry, the 260 uh, GTX is what was in there before. So that I upgraded that since I had it laying around, even though it is overkill uh, for the CPU that's in this computer. It works fantastic. It makes every game run extremely well, which is what we're going to talk about and show a little bit of my... Um, just two really quick games on Windows XP so you guys can get an idea of a, a couple of games here on how they run on Windows XP and then we'll switch over to Windows 9D. So let's go ahead and take a look at some gameplay on Windows XP. So one of my favorite games on Windows XP, of course, that's sitting right there is the Unreal Tournament franchise. So I'm going to show you uh, UT 2004, even though Unreal Tournament 3 is on here and runs perfectly. I want to show you the classic Unreal Tournament 2004 because that's the one that I played the most when I was a kid. And it also does some really cool things with this keyboard here. Um, so even though this keyboard is old, I was able to find some stuff to actually still let it work on here, which is really cool. So I'm gonna show you that here real quick. We'll go ahead and uh, click instant action here. And I have uh, F the uh, fraps running on there so you guys can take a look on all that. And who remembers this from when you did this back in the day in Armorall Tournament 2004? Holy shit. So that's what happens every time you hit everything to max back in the day in this game, which was hilarious. Uh, so if we just did deathmatch here, we'll just go ahead and play that one. You can see here, waiting to start. You can see the players are about to start here. You can see on the little screen there. Uh, now it shows how many frags I have, how many deaths I have. Uh, and it tells you the, the player order uh, on there. And here we are playing Unreal Tournament 2004. So you can see I got a kill and now it shows a kill on the keyboard. So I remember loving this keyboard when it did stuff like that. Uh, a lot of games didn't take advantage of it, unfortunately, back in the day. Uh, you know, at, at least more than I wanted. But uh, some did, and Unreal Tournament 2004 being one of my favorite ones, it was awesome that this game was one of the ones that did take advantage of it. Uh, got wrecked there. Um, so it's really cool, because then you get to see who's in the lead and, and who's not. I used to have so much fun playing this game. We used to have land tournaments with this game. Knocked them out. Um, you know, we used to have land tournaments all the time for this game. It was so much fun. Kill kill. This is a, definitely my game. I used to love playing this game. So that gives you a little bit quick look of what Unreal Tournament is like on this machine here. And why I really like this clock and this keyboard for Windows XP is because some of the games do stuff like that. There are more games that do 
cool stuff with the keyboard. Borderlands 2 is another one that does stuff like that. But the other game that I wanted to show you on uh, Windows XP here is, of course, the original Crisis, one of the games that used to be the hardest to actually run uh, back in the day. Um, and actually, when I ran this game at full resolution on the original 260 graphics card that it came with, I actually couldn't keep up. It was running at about 30 frames a second. And uh, that's actually what caused me to switch the graphics card out because I thought the 260 would have been perfectly fine for most of the stuff I was playing, which it was. But then I came along Crisis. That's when I went into realizing that I had a spare, so I swapped it out and now have this going on here. And I'll show you guys how this game is now running. And this computer is running uh, two Western Digital. I have one, two, one for the main OS and one for the games. It is running two Western Digital Raptor drives. One is a 500 gig and one is a 250 gig. So uh, remember those Raptor drives being 10,000 RPMs. I, I thought it was more appropriate to use hardware from back in the day that was Windows XP. Even though I could have put an SSD in here, I wanted to go with the one that actually replicated the experience I would have had back in the XP days. Here we are looking at Crisis here. If you guys can remember how good this game looked and how hard it was for this game to run. And this card uh, and this CPU is, st are, is still struggling a little bit to actually run this game. I mean, it's not a perfect 60 FPS, but it's definitely most playable there and we just reached the checkpoint to put on our strength so we can jump higher and now it wants us to switch the cloak so those enemies can't see us you can see it runs it runs a lot better than it did before it's actually playable it's still it still sometimes, you know, lowers the frame rates as you guys are seeing there above, but it's definitely playable now as opposed to before, like I said, that it ran at like literally like 10 to 20 FPS on the other card. Um, this is literally the only game that struggles on, uh, not, I wouldn't even say struggles, but it just doesn't run 60 FPS and above on this machine now with this graphics card. It's literally just this one. Even Crisis 2 runs a little bit better than this game does on this GPU and this CPU. It's just this game that really taxes it just like we all remember this game taxing us back in the day. But uh, as you can see, we're not getting over 60 here, so it runs really well on here. Uh, sometimes it dips to like the 30s and 40s like you saw for a split seconds, but then immediately rises back up. It, it's perfectly playable now uh, with this GPU. It runs so much better, so much smoother. Uh, instead of the 10 to 20 and 25 FPS that the other graphics card on here now runs. So this is the most demanding game that I think I'll ever play on this machine. Um, so it's nice to see that this game runs as well as it does. So that is basically Windows XP there. So uh, we can go ahead and turn this machine off here. And like I said before, we can easily switch to our Windows 98 machine. We can just switch that over here. We can kind of just put this keyboard to the side for the time being since it's not something we're going to be using. And then like I talked about in the overview, I kind of just whip out the uh, Acer keyboard here that matches the aesthetics and Windows 98 here. Go ahead and plug this in right to the front. We can take this mouse kind of out of the way, kind of switch spots with it, put the mouse from Windows XP up there, bring this one up here, kind of hide these cords here for the time being just like that. And then I got my mouse here for 98 and you can see now I'm sitting here on Windows 98 and I have a lot more games installed on here than just that list. You know, there's a gigantic list of uh, Windows 98 games that I have installed on here from Quake 3 Arena, uh, you know, a bunch of a bunch of different things, uh, Command and Conquer, all that stuff. But the one I wanted to show you that really reminisces of being uh, Windows 98 back in the day for me, I think that's something that I played in school nonstop is, of course, War in the World is Carmen San Diego, which we're going to look at right now. And it's funny because uh, War in the World is Carmen San Diego will only run if you have it set to 256 colors and 800 by 600 or else it's going to complain and it's not going to look as good because it won't go full screen. So you actually have to lower this so it actually runs better. We'll go ahead and grab our disc here for War in the World is Carmen San Diego. I'll go ahead and pop that into the drive there. And you can see we're now in the world of War in the World is Carmen San Diego playing on here. One of my favorite games from back when I was in school played this all the time it's crazy that it has to run at a resolution of 640 uh by 480 for it to be full screen but that's how these old games were i believe this came out for for i think this was is this dos i believe that it first came out with uh yeah it looks like this was dos first or windows 3.1 uh when this first got released so you can go ahead and play this now who remembers this classic intro here there we go good to have you back on the job i've got a brand new case for you would you like to take it 
who remembers that classic lady? I, I, I remember her so fondly when I was uh, a person who used to play this in school. There's fear in Nigeria because someone robbed a river delta. The delta of the Niger, to be exact. That watershed wets the country's most fertile farmland, and you've got to get it back. Go to it, Gumshoe. That classic music. Man, who remembers this? You used to click on what people. What can I do for you? They would ask you what you wanted. You would say, where'd the suspect go? Tell me about it's the suspect. It's not that she's too wide. It's the doorways are too narrow. So you can see exactly, you know, how they're describing the character. And you're taking notes to go to go see Glad who they to be were. of service. So this was such a fantastic and classic game from back in the day, guys. Windows 98 has so many good games on here. Uh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? It's not the only one. That is on here, of course. Uh, I have a lot of other games on here as well, which were, were just fantastic on Windows 98, and I'm glad to have, you know, Windows 98 on here. I know a lot of people are always wondering, you know, why would you have a PC for Windows 98 and Windows XP if you can just play these games on a modern system like Windows 10? And yes, some of these games you can, some of these games are on GOG and stuff, but it's nothing like playing on original keyboard hardware like the G19 and this keyboard here and the mouses and the original mouse that everyone used to love back in the day and a CRT monitor at the proper resolutions and the proper frame rates, you know, and playing with these controls. You know, this one uses game port that wouldn't be able to work on a computer unless it has a game port sound card in it. The sound blaster uh, card that's sitting on here with the Logitech 5500 being around all of these games, you know, actually having to use CDs unlike how we do Steam right now. All of these things just bring you back to the retro times of back in the 90s and 2000s. And when I was building this, that's exactly what I wanted. You know, it's the same reason why I have all these other games back there for uh, retro games like, you know, the NES and the Super Nintendo. Obviously, I can just build one box and play all of those games, uh, you know, ROM hacks and not own these originals. But it's nothing like playing on the original console on, gen on an original CRT with the original controllers and, and reminiscing of back of being a kid and stuff and having these as part of your collection. So I'm really, really happy with where the setup is now. I think it's finally in the perfect place with both of these that cover the whole entire era of Windows 98, DOS, and Windows XP uh, and everything else. Obviously, I can play on my Windows 10 machine past this, and it's now in a perfect spot. I think this area is now completely done and looks fantastic, except for this one speaker that I need to switch out that's coming in soon to replace it with the 5500 center since the rest of these are the right ones uh but just missing the center one so guys if you guys have any questions about what you guys saw in today's video i hope you guys enjoyed this tour if you have any questions as always leave those questions down below if not thank you guys for watching Till next time